Prison Break series review. When a man is framed for murder and sent to jail, his brother tries to get him out legally, but when the execution has a set date on it, he realizes he has no other option. So he plans to break him out of a high security jail. It's not going to be easy and he's not going to be able to do it all alone. He's going to make some dodgy alliances within the walls and will his intellect actually be able to get them both safely out of this prison. The basic setup for Prison Break really doesn't sound like it has a chance to last more than a couple of seasons, because how do you keep something alive that is basically just a story of some people getting out of jail? You do that by having it be a conspiracy that they then have to deal with once they're out of jail. Does it work? Not really. We never care as much about the conspiracy, convoluted though it may be, as the jailbreaks. They are always the most fun. Fortunately, the show writers realized this and they tried to make sure that we had a lot of that and they did pretty well. I'm not going to give away how much, but I will say they do a pretty good job of balancing. There's a lot of planning going on and a lot of tension, a lot of small little tasks that have to go exactly right and where you know just one little misstep and it might be completely screwed up and you don't know how else they're going to get out. The I know it sounds like it might be like watching a video game, someone else play a video game, but it is pretty fun. The first season would have to be the best one. The second is pretty good also, and the third. The fourth... <sighs> no, not as good as the first three, and it just, it just wasn't as good. It had a very big problem with the base concept. Basically, every main character who's still alive and who you know, knows of the whole jailbreak thing is thrown together and they're all working on the same team and for the same, towards the same goal. Even though earlier they've been, you know, on and off fighting against each other and other things have happened, a lot of tension is lost. A lot of the... I know that it's supposed to be like, oh, will, will the rest of the group be able to trust this guy, but what it really does is there's just way too little time for most of the characters, and they just, most of them don't get to do much of anything interesting, or they don't get a lot of time spent on them. Which is not to say that any of the characters completely stop being interesting in the fourth season. But, yeah. The characters tend to be pretty straightforward and kind of cliche. We have Michael Schofield, the brains of the sibling couple. He's really the one who thinks up these brilliant schemes and who works on the details of getting them out. And then we have the guy who was framed, 
whose name escapes me at the moment, played by Dominic Purcell. And no, he's not that good of an actor. He's the muscle of the sibling relationship, and yeah, he's, he's the physical part. Whenever there's a f big physical part that, you know, when someone needs to be beaten up or something like that, he's the one who does it, and that he does do well. The actor, as well as the character. We do believe that Purcell can pull this stuff off, and they realize that he's not that great of an actor. He kind of has the one expression. Looking intense. And they don't write a lot of stuff where he has to do much of anything else. We have Sarah Tancredi, the nurse at the jail that they start out at, and she and Schofield kind of develop a relationship. You see this coming right away, so it's not really a spoiler. We have... Yeah, those are pretty much the ones you really need to know about. And as I said, they're pretty straightforward. But, there is a wild card. Robert Knepper, if that's how you pronounce it, as Teabag. This is by far the most interesting character in the entire show. There's a bit of a Gollum thing going on with him. You know that there used to be potential there. You know that this guy, he's not stupid. Maybe he could really do, you know, big, important things. But he is in this situation. He is... A bit of a redneck and a very dangerous psychopath and he is by far the most interesting to follow. Knepper, the writing does a lot of the work but Knepper's performance really brings it you know all the way to you know beyond just you know, a fun character on the show. He is genuinely memorable, you know. Knepper d d devised this sort of... I don't know if, you know, if it was him personally, but he's got this thing where he uses his tongue in a sort of... It's almost like a... One of those snakes that, you know, it's, it, you know, comes out and you can kind of see that... You feel like he's gonna sink his teeth into someone, you know, you know that something bad is gonna happen. He is, he is thinking of something, he is planning something, and it is not going to be good for whoever has to pay in this situation. The acting does tend to be pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. There are a few exceptions where they are really great and some that just aren't all that good. The overall storyline is reasonable, but you never get a complete sense of who the people, you know, who framed are one of our protagonists. Who they are, and what exactly it is they want, they keep insisting on keeping it vague, and that's fine for a while, but sooner or later you're going to have to give us some details if you want closure, and the show does want closure. That's very clear from, you know, near the ending. But instead they kept just keeping it very vague, and by the time the show's over, you're not entirely sure if you think that okay, you know, the good guys won, or wait, did they, what What exactly were the, what were they fighting again? And that's just not that fortunate for this kind of thing. You're cheering for them whenever they're, you know, breaking out of prison or undertaking some kind of important plan, but whenever the company get involved, 
yeah, it's just not quite as compelling. In spite of many twists, many of which you definitely don't see coming. The the seasons, their plots, are pretty good. You tend to really feel like it you know, each season is pretty self-contained without being completely separate from the others. You know, it is a chronological series of events. You can follow the whole thing, and you definitely shouldn't be watching any season if you haven't watched the seasons that come before it. But they do have separate arcs that tend to be pretty satisfying. The biggest problem is with, you know, the the company behind it all. When they get too involved, it's just not quite as good. And I would also say that they're the most scary early on. Later on, I don't know, they they just lose some of it. Now, I understand that the last two episodes were apparently separately released as the final break or something like that. You know, they, they came out on DVD here. I watched them here on TV in Denmark, so... I can confirm that they do kind of... It could have ended before those two. If you do not watch the very last two episodes, yes, there is an ending to the show. And honestly, it's a little better than the ending that those two episodes provide. At least to me. I don't know. It... It was interesting. It wasn't without its good elements, definitely. And there were some things in it that I really did not see coming. But, as far as closure goes, as far as the overall quality of the ending, I would definitely say when you've watched the second to penultimate episode, I suppose, consider if you don't think that that's the best ending that you could, you know, do not let curiosity get the better of you if you really like that ending, because the final ending is different. And I suppose that pretty much covers the show. Well, the it does keep to a pretty intense pace most of the time, but a lot of the time it's tension more than intensity, you know? It's not that they're doing something that's going really fast, it's that they're doing something that's very risky and you know that they could be caught and the whole thing could be, you know, their plans could be completely foiled at any minute. There are some pretty good shootouts and chase scenes vehicular and otherwise, and it tends to be filmed quite well. When the show does action, it does it well. Brett Radner of Rush Hour fame, the director of those, I believe he executive produced it or co-created, something like that, and you can tell because the man does know how to do action, and thankfully we do not have to put up with black guy stereotype you know who I'm talking about. Chris something, I think. Yeah, that's a relief. And the psychology of the show is actually also quite accurate. And, yes, that, I believe, covers the show. So that was my review of Prison Break the Series. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.